Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today, in the Airstream Bambi project, I'm going to be cutting a hole right in the interior shell, right on the front curbside corner. And uh, I need to replace this panel that's all buckled from a fire that it had previously. So if you've been watching this series, you could see that I've done cabinetry and some plumbing, electrical, all in mock-up stages. Well, I'm getting close to being finished with most of the cabinetry, but now I want to start working on and prepping the shell uh, to improve that. So here is a new piece of aluminum. This is the style aluminum they used back in the 60s, and it's got some plastic on it. And it's uh, 48 inch, 48 and a half inches long by 28 inches tall. So I already had pre-cut it with my electric shears here. And what I had to do was figure out how much of this material I have to cut out to get rid of that rippling effect. So I determined I'm going to replace this panel here. But I'm not going to go all the way down to the floor. It's not necessary. I'm going to overlay this panel right even with the top of the sofa. And the cushion sits up here, so you're not going to see the seam. You'll see a little bit of a seam here, but if you look throughout the whole entire trailer, there's seams everywhere. So it's going to match in pretty good. And on the opposite side of the trailer, there's a backrest cushion. So you wouldn't be able to see how unproportioned it is. So what I did was I measured down from this line here and I measured down 24 inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel away. I'm going to leave this lip from here to here intact. This panel is going to lay on top and then I'm going to rivet it across all the way across the bottom. So it's uh, 24 inches from here to here and then I'm going to cut all along this line right here to the other side where that circle is and then I'm going to cut up and then last I'll drill out the rivets and remove the panel. Now I'm not cutting all the way over because there's a rib right here. Okay, I'm cutting right to here and going up. So when this panel overlays I'll be able to rivet it down here and rivet it across all the way on the bottom. And that should get rid of the ripple effect. On this piece right here, I'm going to drill out these rivets and slip the new panel behind it. Then you're going to see a seam right here by the door edge. So it's going to blend in pretty good. And it's all going to be painted to match the new interior uh, skin. So first things first, I got to remove that electrical outlet. Then I could prep and drill the hole so I could turn the shears to go from horizontal to vertical. And then I'll drill out the rivets last. I have the outlet out. I can remove the box from the wall. There's just two screws that attach it to the wall. I used a lot of flathead screws back then. Oh, just lost one. And the box itself should come right out. And then the wire is tucked behind there and you got some insulation. This wire here is prepped for the water pump. So when I put the new panel up, I'm going to have to drill holes here to install the new boxes. But I might move them into a different spot if there's some slack. Okay, now what I have to do is I have to drill a hole in the corners here. Okay, that will allow me to get the shears to make the turn I need to turn. And I can only cut here because there's a rib structure right here. So put on my safety glasses. You gotta be careful, you don't wanna drill through wires and you don't wanna drill outside of the trailer. Run it backwards first, then forward. Okay, there's the hole there. Now I gotta drill another hole up front. Same thing, I'll line it up. Backwards, forward. Okay, there's the hole we needed. 
So now when I run the shears along this line right here, I can make the turn and go up. And I could grab my battery operated shears and the head uh, actually tilts so I could twist the head around to get different angles by unlocking it here and twisting it. So I want to get this angle here so the battery's not in the way. And what I want to do, I want to come in like this, make sure that locks in place, and just run it along. Some areas are easier to use the shears to, to finish off too. Some areas that are tight when there's something behind there, the shears can't get in. You can just trim it off with these. crazy how aluminum changed. It's all crumbly when I'm cutting it all the part where the high heat was. You can see the discoloration and you can see the discoloration and the insulation from the fire. You can see the regular insulation and what the heat did to it. And that's the outside skin right there. And there's some of the wires running through for the outside lights. Now I know a lot of people at this point would try to replace insulation, but <clears throat> I'm gonna leave it, I think it's fine. There's no, uh, it's not all balled up with uh, rodent droppings. You can see water pump wires right here they come up from the bottom and this wire comes from the top. So now what I'm going to do is I got to drill out all these rivets up top and down the side here so I could slip the new panel in place. out now and this piece is loose from the back piece. You always want to be careful of the razor edges and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this piece and use it as a template so when I line up the new piece I know exactly where to drill the holes for the rivet spacing behind it. So now I'm just going to do some snips here and get this piece out of the way and then I'll clean up the area so I can install the new panel. This is what the piece looks like. You can see the fire damage on the back. I'm gonna save this for the template later. I'm gonna drill out a few more rivets here on the window frame. 
take a paint scraper, just scrape that edge of paint there. So the new piece of the place. What I used to make the measurements so I knew how much material I needed in the draw the lines, I just used a wooden yardstick that is malleable and you could push it in and you could take your measurements, but you could also make uh, different markings because it's so malleable and you could draw a straight line when it's in a curve. You just do your measurement down, line up the two spots and draw a line and it allows you to draw around a curve. Now that this is all cleaned up, you can see where the panel now is going to slip behind. Go down, around the top of the sofa, right to here, and go up this seam right here. And it's going to slip behind this piece here. Now what I do is grab the pre-cut aluminum and line it up. And I took some measurements and I just wanted to understand where the rough end for electrical will be. Since there is a big lip on this side, I want to try to get it behind this lip first before I slip it behind the lip for the window. Uh, this could be uh, a little tough since this, this is an exact fit piece. But let me give it a shot. Okay, got it there. I have to try to flex it enough to get it behind the window. To get the extra clearance I need, I just have to remove this door catch out of the way. And then I can clean up this area. Just a little bit of tape behind there. Okay. Take this strip now down. Now I should be able to slide it over the rest of the way. Right to the edge of the door. That is a tight fit. Whew. Lots of struggle, but it's in. Here's the panel. Now what I have to do is line it up. I'm going to screw it in place, then drill out and re-rivet it back in. I'll put in one of the more forgiving areas, I'll put a screw in the window frame. I'll hold it there. And then, once I get this side all lined up, I'll put a screw right here in the corner. That's going to hold it in place. And then I'll be able to line up where I'm going to do the rivet line. And what I'm going to do to keep the spacing is use that piece I saved before. And I'm going to make a pencil mark all the way around, about a quarter inch from the center rivet line. And that's where all the rivets are going to go. Just so you can get the idea, I'm going to drill a couple. Just 
one. This rivet gun doesn't really shoot the rivet out the back easily. So what I do is I just force it through. I'm going to continue all along the top and then I'm going to rivet the bottom in because it is sticking out a little bit. We're going to do that once we get the top all in. Okay, so after about 30 minutes of drilling and riveting, I got the new panel installed. It slips behind the seam like I wanted to, right up to the door frame and gasket. And then along the bottom, there was a little bit of warping on the panel behind it. So I pulled it in with screws. I'm going to hold it for a little while. Then once I got the interior furniture that I have mocked up in here, you know, I'm going to take this out and sand it and stain it. Then when I get to the painting process, I'll just put those last few rivets in. But you can see, as I got to the bottom, I had to use bigger rivets than what I used up top. And I needed to really pull that in. And the top is going to match the rivets that the rest of the shell has. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, share, subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon.